Well, CM Punk will be the fifth man. Oh, it'll be Seth Rollins. Oh, Brock Lesnar will come back. Everyone's forgotten about him watching Vince McMahon's mistress take her pee break. Oh, thank you, Triple H. I love you. Oh, oh, Dave Meltzer suggested this will happen. Oh, but Sean Ross Sapp said this. Oh, Michael Sidgwick is still a virgin. My theory is it will be John Cena at War Games. 16-time world champion. The number 16 turns up everywhere at the moment. This is why you've got to pay attention. Because professional wrestling is so cerebral. Oh, oh, this is my life. I obsess about fake fighters and their backstage shenanigans. I'll kill anyone who doesn't love Triple H. Oh, oh, oh. Forty hours a week. That's what most folks are looking at to survive. Forty hours a week of work to foot your bills, keep a roof over your head, to have enough money in the bank, to maybe have a partner, have some kids, all the usual expectations of being an adult. There's those rich enough, of course, to not lose almost two days' worth of weekly consciousness on work. And there's those poor enough to sit around waiting for Big Daddy government's hand-me-downs as well. But otherwise, by the time your work is done, your brain, your attention span, your energy is all so fried that you just don't have the energy, the prana, if you will, to do anything worthwhile with what little free time you've got left. And that's why so many, all over the world, find themselves slumped on the couch frying their eyes on a big bright box in the living room. Do you think we human beings were meant for this? Sitting in front of a computer all day, maybe hitting the gym for an hour in the evening, if you can be bothered, and then watching TV all night? I don't. It occurred to me very recently, what an utter waste of time modern life is. Drinking makes you dumb. Smoking makes you gross. Work makes you miserable. And film and TV, let's just get real, they blow hard. Modern film and TV, that is. Girl bosses, soy boys, the destruction of classic franchises, the hatred of audiences. Can you imagine being such a pompous, privileged pillock that you make something to hate on the people who will actually put money into watching it. <laughs> Disgusting. And all of this applies to most entertainment mediums, including our topic for today, professional wrestling. The big three wrestling promotions in the world, and this is from someone who doesn't watch Lucha Libre, before all the AAA and CMLL fans lose their minds and no one cares at all, here are the big three. Number one, WWE by a million miles. Nowhere else is even vaguely close to WWE's level. Number two, a comically distant number two that gets more distant every week, AEW. And number three, AEW's bareback bottom, NJPW, once the jewel of Japanese professional wrestling, now a dying feeder league no one cares about. And when I say top three, because I understand a lot of marks out there will be too stupid to understand what I mean. I mean biggest, most successful, most recognizable companies, all right? Because I know someone's like, oh, that's just your opinion, WWE is the best. That's not what I'm saying at all. Let's start with number one. WWE is boring. There you go. It attracts easily, easily, the dumbest people on earth who will just think anything is great if you sell it to them enough. People were so unhappy with senile Vince McMahon's weird product near the end there that they just bend over for Triple H no matter what. Now, Triple H is a smart guy. He's mastered the perfect style of by-the-numbers booking that dumb people can follow. That is also consistent enough in continuity 
to avoid the main criticism of the final years of Vince McMahon booking. Here's a summary of Triple H's booking. Here we go. Long. Plodding. Predictable. By the numbers stories you can see coming from six months away that take forever to hit the big moment everyone knows is coming. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. Soft, unmanly, so-called baby faces. Cody Rhodes is the most feminine, emotional, boring, corporate manufactured babyface lead hero of all time. He's fake crying. He's lithby voice. He's oddly thin and mediocre physique by the infernus very lofty standards of the role he's in. It's all lame. It's profoundly uncool. Crying about handing a belt to his mum. Begging for cheers. And it's a perfect fit for these days. We're getting emotionally overwhelmed is the norm for the age of safe spaces, cry-ins, and general look-at-me hysterics. WWE is not professional wrestling. That requires smoke and mirrors, grittiness, realism, a concerted effort to pull the wool over fans' eyes and keep them immersed. WWE is not even sports entertainment anymore. It's just smart mark booking for the mainstream. Supported by millions of butts whose lives are so empty they will actually tell others they should be grateful for WWE. Grateful for B-grade television. Grateful for a goofy, fake fighting show. Get a life. Bloody hell. AEW. AEW is run by a Nepo baby. One of the biggest problems plaguing modern society. Dumb. Untalented. Untested. Undeserving people. Getting luxurious. Big deal lives. Just handed to them because their prior generation pulled a couple of things off. The result, in the case of AEW, has been Twink Central, as hordes of little soft men play with each other in the ring. Look no further than a recent feud. Jack Perry versus Daniel Garcia. It has to be the gayest feud in all of professional wrestling. Literally. The way they talk to each other. The way Garcia has Perry held against the wall. It's erotic. They clearly want each other. It's all like something out of a Brian Singer fever dream. Nepo Khan clearly can't control his talent. And he lets the young bucks, the two lamest, most insufferable dweebs in modern professional wrestling history, run riot over his show, chasing off his cash cow and decimating his ratings and taking extended breaks whenever they feel like it. Heavyweights with potential are scuppered in service of little gymnasts on the regular, and so-called dream matches are full of people only the dorkiest of smirks would give a toss about. The only thing, funnily enough, that AEW has occasionally bested WWE on is storytelling. Feuds like CM Punk vs MJF, Hangman Page vs Kenny Omega, and Hangman Page again, versus Swerve Strickland were all very well told, well-developed story arcs by wrestling standards, with a surprising amount of nuance and depth, again, by wrestling standards, not by actual art standards. Hangman and Kenny was a bit predictable, but then again it was not offensively predictable, like Triple H's stuff so often is. Now though, for AEW, there's no real direction or style, Everything's a mess, and Tony Khan randomly lets a secretly bald, overrated embarrassment pretend she's some kind of wrestling goddess. Embarrassing the promotion, embarrassing fans caught watching it, and embarrassing wrestling as a whole, in the process! And NJPW, New Japan. New Japan, this is interesting. This is a much bigger crime than either of the other two companies just mentioned have ever committed. New Japan hates, seemingly, its own domestic talent. It's a trader promotion to its own country. Watch it, and you'll quickly see what I mean. 
guys like Yota Suji and Yuya Uemura, or however you say his name, should be getting set up as the new faces of the company. Charismatic, athletic, Japanese wrestlers from the New Japan Dojo system, in the prime of their life, athletically speaking. Instead, the promotion is constantly jerking off over bland Westerners no one cares about, like Zack Sabre Jr. and David Finley. It bends over for AEW like there's no tomorrow, while AEW snatched away its ace, plus two foreign talents fans actually cared about for a change. Its storytelling is laughable, if you can even call it that, and the only domestic star getting a look in at the world title level right now is, wouldn't you know it, a mid-Nepo baby no one wants to see at that level. Funny that. Strong style, Antonio Inoki's old vision for wrestling before he went completely insane, yeah, that is dead, that is buried, and it is never coming back. Overall, we are all wasting our lives, and not just on wrestling, that's the example just used here, on entertainment in general, on fascination with people more famous than ourselves, all while taxes get bigger, wars rage on, rights disappear, cultures are desecrated, corruption runs rampant in every institution, and the world sleepwalks into total destruction. Entertainment, I'll put it very simply to you, this is the conclusion I've come to, is evil. It's bread and circuses for the dopey masses, and it's working like a charm, it's worked on us all. What it leads to is a slow, steady detachment from reality as people acquire a diminished sense of personal agency and responsibility in their own lives, in service of trying to live vicariously, whether they realize it or not, through those who manage to get a better spot by actually taking some gambles, even if they absolutely suck, and sadly in show business, sucking is a very important thing to do if you want to get ahead. That being said, if you really enjoy WWE or AEW or whatever, you don't need to feel personally attacked here, although I know how the mind of the barely human Mark works, and it is to feel personally attacked on everything. It's people, losers, frankly, who make it their whole life watching something that are the problem, and that have turned wrestling in this case into a dorky cringe fest that many people now just laugh at, Making wrestling, or any other show, franchise, entertainment, medium, etc. your whole life simply means you don't have a life. Fix that before it fixes you. Ugh, well anyways. Big thanks to everyone who subscribed to this channel. It's over 1900, which isn't very good. I never really put enough effort into SEO or social media or being interesting to try and grow it properly and... Beyond that, let's, I'll be perfectly honest with you, who really wants to subscribe to some random Brit roasting lame wrestling topics on a basic commentary channel? There's already a bunch of even lamer Brits than myself who do that for a living. I'm going to still make videos occasionally, if you can even call these things videos, but they won't be professional wrestling mercury anymore. Oh no. No, no. Everything has changed. And I'll be covering a different style of topic and genre, you could say. And I strongly encourage all of you listening to this, strongly encourage you to take heed of what I've said and to stop wasting your time. Anyways, if uh, you're still listening, cheers. And this next bit, it does go for me too. Get out there and hashtag touch grass. But for real, not in the ironic loser way, British wrestling marks or whoever say it to project onto others for the fact they never leave their bedroom and their photos of Mercedes Monet on their computer. Take up as many hobbies and disciplines as you can, week to week. Learn and grow, pick up a new trade, I don't know. Leave the telly off for a bit, and just see how you feel. 